Hello friends and enemies, welcome back to Happy For Now. It's me, Isabel here, and I was debating this and you know, some other people have done these. I really thought, I really think they're fun and I think it's a great way to talk about romance books and different subgenres within romance and maybe find a book you might like. So I have no, a lot of people don't read historical romance or are afraid of it because it's kind of this really like monstrous category of romance. So I want to talk about it and I want to give you some of my recommendations that range from Regency to the 60s. Got Regency to Civil Rights Movement covered in this video for you. So if maybe you want to dip your toes into historical but you don't want to go all the way back. Uh, historical was one of the genres I came to a little bit later in my romance reading. I was definitely a contemporary reader first. So when I started reading historicals, I started with Tessa Dare's Castle Ever After series. The first one I read was Romancing the Duke, and this is When a Scot Ties the Knot. I loved these series. They all are about different women falling in, like getting married to various dudes in Regency era. And they, they really drew me in because basically the whole premise is that they need somewhere to live. Uh, when a Scott ties a knot in particular is delightful because she's writing letters to this man that is away fighting for the army who she made up but turns out he's real so that was a real delight to read personally I think it was kind of the best like I don't even know what trope that is like honestly I'm trying to like what is that trope but it's the best sort of little fun like surprise <laughs> um, and they end up getting married and she has to like navigate her family with this dude that she doesn't know and is like hello I got your letters I heard we were getting married <laughs> so so good these all have wonderful heroines that I think are really relatable and a delight to read another Tessa Dare book that's a little more recent so you've definitely heard about it is The Duchess Steel which is 100% a kind of twist on Beauty and the Beast she rolls up to his house uh, the Duke of Ashbury's house and is like in this wedding dress that his ex-fiance ordered and says you need to pay for this <laughs> so that is always like kind of a great premise of you know you gotta pay me back for this uh, I used my skill and labor to make it and she backed out so another one that I highly recommend oh it also this one is one of the delightful marriages of conveniences where there are a lot of rules in place that they can't break like they're only husband and wife by day and at night they sleep in separate bedrooms there's no kissing no no like intimacy uh, she can't ask him any questions about his scars from war it's just Beauty and the Beast right there just the best I wanted to switch it up and not just obviously feature straight Regency um, I wanted to show you some queer sapphic and also men loving men Regency um, first of all, I have Olivia Waite's sapphic novel, The Lady's Guide to Celestial Mechanics, which I think is a delightful book. It is not super steamy. So if you are looking for something that's not overly steamy, this is a great option for you. There is intimacy on the page, but I don't believe it's as like explicit as other books can be. I definitely would have liked it to be dirtier. Take that with a grain of salt, obviously, because I'm also not someone who's like reading a lot of closed door romance in general. This is a delightful book though. We follow Lucy and Catherine. So Lucy is an aspiring astronomer. Her, hus her husband, her dad passes away and she continues his life's work to write his book about like explaining it to like lay people, like your normal everyday person. And Catherine is a widow and she wants to finish publishing this book her husband was publishing. Uh, there's like bisexual rap and it's just a very sweet sapphic love story. I can't recommend it enough. I really really love this book and I cannot wait for the sequel that is about another couple. Let's say you want to read an old school romance that's historical. The things that like our many of our parents were reading quite possibly in the day depending on how old you are, I don't know, but this is Dreaming of You by Lisa Claypiss. <sighs> I have a lot of feelings about Derek Craven, and I really love this book, and I actually really want to reread this book this year. Uh, I read it last year for the first time, and I fell in love with Derek. I found this used copy, and I'm getting it signed by Lisa Claypiss herself um, in April, and I cannot wait 
like I'm probably gonna cry uh, I'll try and keep my cool but we'll see <laughs> Um, so Derek Craven runs a gaming hell and Sarah finds her way into it and he decides he has to protect her. It's great. It's produced one of my favorite memes, which it memes, which is Derek Craven would never with Tom Hardy. Uh, I think he's a great cast for Derek Craven. I would love to see this adapted and I just might have to go reread it like as soon as I'm done filming this video. I'm bad at selling this book. It's really good and you should read it if you're interested in Lisa Kleypas. And if you've not read it yet and you like Lisa Kleypas, please please check it out. So we have to talk about Miss Bev, the queen herself. Miss Bev uh, has the Old West trilogy that is my particular favorite and it is in a different era than all the other historicals because it's the Old West. And I think that these are a great starting point for Miss Bev because they're newer and they're delightful and if you like them she has a massive back catalog you can dive right into and enjoy. So if you want to read about Edie and Ryan who honestly like, whew. Miss Bev writes heroines that I want to marry every single time. I love the men in her books, but every single heroine she writes, I want to marry. In Tempest, she writes this heroine who just buys herself her own stove because she has the money to, and is like, fuck it, I want a better stove in this house. She's a mail order bride and buys a stove. Like, hello, the power. I, I just, I love it so, so much. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I highly, highly recommend these. A lot of people I know, these were their first Miss Bevs and they all fell in love. She's the best. Um, just cannot recommend Forbidden, Tempest, and the middle book enough. And my battery's dying. Hold on. Okay, so I'm back. Hopefully the camera angle's the same. I had to change the battery real quick. Uh, to wrap up, Forbidden is, and Beverly Jenkins are a great starting point because you really can't go wrong and I do need to finish her back catalog desperately. I have never read a Beverly Jenkins book I didn't enjoy. I've read ones I didn't love as much as I loved the Old West trilogy but I always like her books overall. Next we have Sarah McLean. Can we even talk about historical romance without talking about Sarah McLean? Probably not for me at least. I adore her books. Day of the Duchess is my favorite because there's an underground ballroom that is based on a real ballroom. Um, this is a second chance romance uh, for a duke and his duchess. She leaves him uh, after some issues, uh, content warnings, pregnancy, and pregnancy loss in this. This book is my favorite of this series, but they're all really, really good, and I highly recommend them. Uh, these are part of the, these are part of the three books she wrote based on modern day, like, gossip rags. So she did A Scott in the Dark and The Rogue Not Taken, um, which is delightful. Scandal and Scoundrel, that's that's the series. It was Scandal and Scoundrel series. I love all of them. This was so good. And I can't recommend that series enough if you're interested because like book one is, one of them's like based kind of on like leaked nude imagery and other things. And it's just a really fun dive into historicals with like modern twists. Also, super feminist books so you gotta love it in a historical but I Day of the Duchess is my number one for Sarah McLean also she has nine rules to break when romancing a rake her debut that's really popular but like I said this me and this book we buds next we have Sophie Jordan's while the Duke was sleeping this is book one in her series of the rogue files and I love this one a lot. This one has like slight Beauty and the Beast vibes to me. He is a grumpy guy and he knows that she's lying when she says that she was the fiance of this guy that got hit. It's like his brother or cousin and <laughs> he's the Ill illegitimate son and it's a whole mess and Poppy is delightful. I really really loved her. Book two is The Duke Buys a Bride and the first chapter has the Duke falling face first into horseship. So if you think that sounds funny, I can't recommend this or that one enough. Um, I actually started with book two in this series, so you can start and go back. Um, I just love them. I didn't love the Scott, uh, the third one with the Scottish guy as much, but I'm excited for the next one also, cause it has, I'm gonna pop the cover up here. Look at that cover. Like I died when they showed that cover off. I was like, I need that in my hands now, like right now. Sophie Jordan is another great option. All right, we've got 
two more authors that I want to tell you about for historicals as re recommendations. Uh, next I have Cat Sebastian. So if you're looking for, so I have this one that I got at KissCon weekend in Atlanta, which is the Unmasked by the Marquess. Cat Sebastian is the love of all of my queer romance reading friends, I feel like. Like everyone adores her. She's delightful. She writes, uh, my favorite is The Lawrence Brown Affair. I've not read all of hers yet. I really, again, I do this thing where I put off authors I know I love and I don't want to read their whole catalog because that amount of books. But like also I want to read them. Does anyone else do this or is this just like a really weird me problem? I don't know. Um, but yeah, she writes really great queer books in Regency times that have awesome representation and more. So The Lawrence Brown Affair is my personal favorite. He shows up to be the personal assistant to the scientist guy and they fall in love and it's real hot and real real good but Cat Sebastian is a great jumping off point. Last but not least of course is Alyssa Cole. I can't talk about historicals without talking about Alyssa Cole. It's like there's like a couple authors I always have to include in this conversation and one of them is Alyssa Cole. Alyssa Cole has the Loyal League series which is set during the Civil War. They're really hard-hitting but really really good really really good i've only read the first book and i want to read the rest but like i literally i think i sobbed for like a while after i finished the first book in a good way like it just was so well done it was way heavier than i expected it to be but i should have expected that obviously it just was my own like personal biases against historical sometimes but uh an unconditional freedom just came out i think it just won the rip bodice award for the year so so good her Civil War books are amazing. So she has Let Us Shine, which is set during the Civil Rights. Let Us Dream is set in 1917 in Harlem. I still haven't read this one yet, and I really, really need to. Um, I think that, again, if you're looking for outside your normal eras, Beverly Jenkins has you covered, Alyssa Cole has you covered. I mean, there's other authors that do it, too. So, yeah, it's really great. Uh, I wanted to share, too, a couple of historical authors on my TBR that I haven't gotten to yet. So one author I really want to read is Rebel Carter. She has a polyamory historical with a mail order bride. It looks like it's set in Montana and I think it's more like a, like post-Civil War. It's something like that. Uh, it looks so good. That cover's gorgeous. Cannot wait to try it. Another one on my list is The Infamous Miss Rodriguez by Lydia San Andreas. Okay, so this is about a girl trying to break her engagement. It's set in the 1900s in the Caribbean, so that sounds amazing. I also need to read K.J. Charles because somehow I've not read K.J. Charles yet. I don't know. I add to the list and then the list just grows. <laughs> it's just, you know, what happens sometimes when you read. So I want to make sure that... I think that's it for this on historical romance recommendations. I hope it helped anyone who's looking to get into the genre try and find their way. Let me know down below again if you want Rex for any other books or specific trope. If there's another genre you want me to do like an intro on and talk more about, uh, I can try to see. I do read a lot but I feel like there's a lot I don't read too. Um, and yeah be sure to subscribe, give the video a thumbs up if you want, if you liked it, and I will see you in a few days with another video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!